Uh, here. This is the thing. Say, Alma, speaking of the past, what was your last long-term relationship like? That's sudden. You dug through my past, I've earned the right to dig through yours. Fine, fine. Long-lasting relationships, huh? I like the conversations that these two have. I think her conversations with Alma are the ones that give you the most insight into Jill. Especially the one from a while ago, where Alma was the bartender. Romantic ones, I'm guessing. Yep. Hmm. Well, I've had about four boyfriends who I'd describe as such. That I've introduced to my family and all. The first one was in high school. I broke up with him because he cheated on me. Ouch. I remember the other girl trying to pick a fight and me just saying, keep him. The second one was during my freshman year. I broke with up. Or I. <laughs> that was weird. Let's see, how would that sentence would play? I broke with up him. Yeah, that really makes sense. I broke up with him after he thought it'd be funny to punch me in the arm. He starts with a friendly hit, and before you know it. Oh no. Ugh. Anyways. The other guy I met shortly after I dropped out. He was interested in marriage, but he wanted to get married after only half a year or so of. Ugh, no. And then there's Richard. Who? I spent almost four years with him. Oh wow. We got along pretty well, and we had awesome chemistry. I truly loved him. But as time went by, there was a rift that started separating us. He just didn't like my family. Yeah, that could... That is a problem causer, isn't it? He didn't. Moreover, he wasn't a family person. He distanced himself from his own and voiced that he didn't want kids. Ugh. Well, not ugh. I don't really want kids, but, you know. There was a part of me that wanted to believe, even if just for a little bit, that maybe he'd change his mind. But as, as much as I loved him, that one detail brought a gap between us. And at one point, I just had to break up with him. All Systems Go is a cool song. No, I'm not here to depress you. Bring me a beer, will you? Sure. Thanks for telling me that, by the way. Don't mention it. Okay, one more question, and we're even. Wow, you really are embarrassed of that blog, huh? Sure, ask away. <laughs> At what age did you get those implants? And now she is angry. Jill, I love you, and I know you're saying that in jest. But I've lived through so many rumors about me getting plastic surgery that I can't and won't take that as a joke. As such, and honoring our friendship, I'll say this. They're real, and they're spectacular. Oh god. Now ask the real question before I slap you. Oh no. I'll grant you one, and only one chance to call me by my full name is compensation then. I'll gladly take your offer. It's funny that you mentioned slapping me, because my real question was why did you get your hands chopped? Huh, <laughs> chopped. Well, there's a couple of reasons. The first is that I spent lots of time typing, and these replacements helped me avoid carpal tunnel syndrome. I didn't realize that those were like, or maybe they mentioned it once already, because those do look kind of mechanical, but there's other utilities, like I can interface with many devices, which can basically R2-D2 it up with their fingers. That's awesome. For example, there's a tiny computer embedded in my glasses. If I move my index finger, it acts as the computer's cursor. There's lots more, but they're small things that don't sound that impressive when I say it out loud. How did your family take the operation? They took it well enough, except for my mom. She freaked out for months. She even went to the hospital to ask for my hands. Don't you miss them? Sometimes, but just during emotional moments. But as luck would have it, someone else has them. Shortly before my operation, there was an accident on the highway. One of the victims was this young lady whose right hand got completely crushed. I told them to check if they were compatible and all that. I mean, implants are not everyone's first choice if they can get a natural replacement. 
A bit of cosmetic treatment and it could pass as her original hand with no problem. Oh, that's nice. Last I heard, we were compatible. Well, and the family agreed to the donation. I don't know what became of her, but I hope she's fine. And you didn't tell your mom about that? I didn't want her pestering the poor girl. Oh man, her mom wouldn't stop at that. Like, I could see it now. I, th I think I originally thought they were just gloves. But, like... Yeah, I could see how it's a robo hand. So are we cool now? Are we even now? Are we? You're, you were pretty mad about my comment earlier. Again, I'm sorry, it sounded a lot less rude in my head. Yeah, don't worry about that. Besides, I get to call you Julianne once. Now you don't. Eh, why? You just called me by my full name. Are you serious? One chance, and only one chance, and you just used it up. Darn it. Surprise, you again? You just love hassling us while Alma's around, don't you? Hey Alma, this might be weird a weird tangent, but do you believe in ghosts? Hey. Not particularly, no. Although there was this paper I read that was quite interesting. Hmm. I proposed a scenario where nanomachine clusters would leave the body after death, and then acted as a collective hive mind through the residual brain waves. The result would basically be an image, not unlike a hologram. Of course, the hypothesis fell through because such nanomachine nano density is impossible in a body. Even 5% of the amount needed is enough to make the blood too dense for the heart. And it's not like brain waves are even potent enough to create those reactions. Still an interesting read, though. I see. Hmm. Don't give me that look. It's not my fault that you convinced yourself you're crazy. Well, I'll leave then. See you tomorrow. See ya. All done? I am. What about you, Gil? For some reason, that idle girl, or the idle girl, left him like that, it seems. I think. It might have been a while. It might have been while he was out. True. Hey, boss, you're a fan of wrestling, aren't you? I mean, you were a wrestler, so. Oh, this is gonna be good. That I am? Why? I was wondering. Isn't. <laughs> The first, uh, alright, considering Dana was actually a wrestler, and could probably, you know, fought like a grizzly bear or whatever, or a shark, or whatever it was, that's the wrong question to come at her with. Aren't twin tails for little girls and teens with 8th grade syndrome? 8th grade what? When you get down to it, wrestling is as real as a soap opera. I mean, you don't really expect a legal lawsuit to be fixed in the ring, right? Sure, my, in my ideal world, you would, <laughs> you would solve legal problems through good old wrestling, but... <laughs> no, seriously, 8th grade what? But you don't go around calling soap operas fake, or any other form of entertainment for that matter. It's a show, it just happens to use fights as an expression. You might as well see it as a unique form of theater. Besides, considering all the injuries many wrestlers suffer, it's not that all that fake. Huh, I didn't think about it that way. Sadly, I won't stand for anyone badmouthing wrestling. So now I have to go and break Gil's back. <laughs> oh man, they went with that reference. Like, the other ones have referenced, like, The Rock or something, so that's easy to get, maybe even if you're not into it. But this one's a little more obscure. Oh, well, wait, what? <laughs> okay, this game's writing is wonderful. Ah! Eighth grade, what? Oh! Oh! We made it. Yahtzee. Alright, today's payment. Flawless service bonus. Who would have thought we'd get a bona fide idol in the bar? You were charged with 10000 for your rent. Have a nice day. Woo! Wonderful. We have a roof over our heads for another month. Yay! Or that's. Alright, Kiramiki. Valhalla. The name sounds silly and a bit hard to pronounce. Good thing it's actually called Valhalla. Oh, well, I guess I. 
The funny numbers and letters are just a code. Anyway, I visited this cute and small bar downtown twice after getting lost for a bit. I think the area was called the Neon District. <laughs> at first it was a bit scary because I forgot my way back, but once I got there, I felt really safe and at home. The bartenders are a bunch of sweethearts and the boss was such a class act. I even took a photo with, photo with her and sent a video to her little sister. I look forward to our th wow. I keep skipping ahead while I'm stuck re- I look forward to visiting again. Face. The drinks were very, very tasty, even though they weren't made of real alcohol. I don't know if I want the bar to become- suddenly become a fan tourism hotspot. Alright, Augmented Eye. New Lilum regulations. Oh wait, Grand Slam Fighter. I'm just gonna skim this one because I'm not unconvinced that I've read it already. After the previous champion, 66 American Kid was forced to relinquish the title due to injury. It held a tournament to find a new title holder. After an epic 30 minute bout with giant Yusuke applying a massive German, su or German suplex for the three count. So I'm, he's waiting for the. I won't rest until I beat him clean. Alright, cool. New Lilum regulations. The current Lilum, or the ter current <laughs> regulations preventing Lilum from looking too human have been working well so far, but Glitch City's government's plan to create even more new laws to enforce robot like features among the Lilum to reduce identity, in a bid to reduce identity theft. Glitch City, the first nation. Glitch City, the first nation to adopt current standard in artificial intelligence and robots, was first to allow was the first to allow robots into normal society, quickly giving them the necessary rights as to sustain a long-term experiment about their role in human excuse me, evolution. Unfortunately, the first year saw numerous reports of identity theft, resulting in more need or in the need for more stringent measures. The law it is unknown what kind of laws we'll have in the future regarding their existence. People look more robot-like by the day, too. Alright, well, now we're gonna save it, because I actually have this, you know, recording. So I can save over there. Alright, and this was the furthest I got, so this next day here is gonna be Uncharted Waters. Friday, December 30th. Good evening. <laughs> oh, Shine Spark. I love that one. Gil, are you humming Shine Spark? Hey, Jill. Are you okay? Are you in love, maybe? <laughs> Nothing of the sort. I'm fine. Right. No, seriously. <laughs> of course. I only get so happy after they've screwed. That's not... Oh my god. <laughs> Was it Alma? Did you have seven minutes? Oh my god. No, I didn't. In any case, congratulations. I haven't seen you this happy since... Well, never. Oh no. Today's escapades will bring us to a familiar place, and... No. Deal. I'm out. I'm gonna... Not so fast. Flat bartender, are you serious? If that's even- that's not her real name. Last time my viewership had a weird peak while I was passed out. So I'm here to find out what made people so interested. Eh? Gah. The scrolling text hurts my eyes. Hmm. Do you have something in my face? Or do I have something in my face? Ugh. Oh. <laughs> they said- there they go again. No doubt about it. It's the, gle the gleam in his eyes is unmistakable. Whatever, just keep it down. Ah, Jill, you're here. Isn't that the passed out girl from two weeks ago? I'm not here. Oh, sorry. I'll be back in my office then. Anyway. Wait, did she just kick her out? Time to mix drinks and change lives. Oh, it's them. Betty and I never remember the that guy's name. 
deal. Um, you are too happy and you are too mopey. What happened? I was right. Eh? That Laura girl was head over heels for him. I was right on the money. Um, say, that girl. I'm not here. Sorry. Isn't she the one that passed out last time? Anyways. Betty was right, and that deserves a beer. And you? I'm fine. A Friday beer for cheerful Betty. And we don't have to just double up everything this time to watch for the purposes of scamming more money off of them. Here. Woo! <laughs> and so the girl was actually infatuated with him. You should have seen her, screaming from the top of her lungs like that she liked him. And him just standing there thinking. Just like that. In retrospect, it was a tad too cliched for my taste. Er. Still, I knew she liked him. I was right. I was right. He doesn't seem particularly happy. He never is. Unlike your co-worker. <laughs> everyone. Everyone is saying that. You're making it too obvious, Gil. How? That beaming face is unmistakable. Oh, God. Back to Deal, though. Like I said, he seems lost in thought. Victories like these are few and far between. Let me enjoy myself. Can I get something non-alcoholic here? That's not how you drown your sorrows. Piece of scrap. I'll have a blue light. Okay. Alright, so non-alcoholic. Easy enough. Get him a sugar rush. One, two, one. Yahtzee. Uh... Hold on. Maybe I, I... I don't know if the order matters, but she's saying blue light in one. Then A. Uh, then the non-alcoholic one in the other. So, I'm going to also, like... Betty is on the left and he's on the right, so slot one is gonna go to the blue light. <laughs> on with both of them. I forget about that one. It's so unnecessarily brown. Ta-da! Alright, now slot two. One, two, one. There we go. Here. Thanks. Same. Celebrate all you want, but I'm freaking out here. I know nothing about relationships. I have no idea what to do. Well, for starters, what do you think, Jill? Or Jill? Me? Her? <laughs> Betty, I've seen a few of your relationships, remember? That's fair. I definitely have friends that if I were in a relationship, I would not or about to enter one, I would not go to them for advice for. Aside from Veronica, there's Ange Angela, Pamela, Sandra, Rita, Monica, Erica, Tina, Harry, and Jessica. Or should I say... Ew. Didn't share the bed sheets, snores like a pig, cold feet, shampoo water, or shampoo waster, okay, chocolate addict. Too religious, fan of the wrong rugby team. What is Tito Taylor? And chews with her mouth open. What do you think, Jill? And you must be quite the heartbreaker to have so many relationships in a short period of time. I mean, I got a piece of scraps situation. And thank you. I'm not the right person for this. Um, Gil? <laughs> <laughs> He's still on cloud nine. Oh man. What about... Sneaky Sneaky? Darned, she actually hides pretty well. Sigh. For starters, how do you feel about her? I don't know. I don't know her that well. You can start there. Ask her out sometime, get to know her maybe. Or get to know her, maybe she'll change her mind. Maybe you'll change yours. 
In the end, you lose nothing by... What? I'm just realizing I'm giving love advice to a Lilum. So I don't know how well it applies to you. Eh, these things are humans and all but organs nowadays anyways. Even if that's the case, it's interesting that she felt that way towards him. Why wouldn't she? This fella is a good catch if I do say so myself. And like I said, humans and all about all but organs. You've surely encountered Lilum that you sometimes forget are not humans. Oh yeah, no one no one expects Dorothy. Well also, Kiramiki is pretty great. We live in weird times, but hey, that's what makes them more interesting. It's odd doing th or going to other cities and not seeing the same integration of Lilum though. One second. Well, Glitch City is pretty much the cradle of social experiments involving Lilum integration, so... <clears throat> anyway. Let's try to get her nowhere. You'll find out how you feel afterwards. Yeah, I think I'll try that. It's quite the uninspired advice, if you ask me. Anything else? Let's commemorate the occasion with a piano man and a piano woman. Alright. Please. I never remember the words of that song exactly. Five. Five. Three. There's Piano Man. 